What's up everybody, Potato here bringing you my very first tutorial of uh, filming and editing I guess. Uh, I want to apologize in advance, I am sick and uh, my voice may sound a little funky. So anyways, let's uh, jump right into it. I'm going to just assume that you guys have zero experience with Sony Vegas. Uh, absolutely zero. Just uh, just barely know how to start it up is where we're going to start. And I think that's good because depending on your level, you can just skip this video. If not, you, um, you'll you get some good information out of it, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> since I've actually installed, uh, I'm actually using the 64-bit version of Sony Vegas, Fraps actually takes a super long time to load up in here. Um, something to do with the codec or whatever, but the 64-bit version of Sony Vegas absolutely hates uh, Fraps videos. So I use this program called Avid Demo or something like that, um, and uh, I use it to convert my Fraps videos into something that's workable. Now uh, I switch it to MJPEG and PCM, and that's all I do. And then hit save and just put label it one or whatever. Um, I'm gonna skip through this, even though it's only gonna take about two minutes. I don't want you guys to just stare at a screen. All right, so we're done. Okay, and now that it is converted, it'll be inside of here, just labeled as one. Uh, you could probably play this with VLC, I'm not too sure, but uh, it doesn't matter because Vegas sees it just fine. Um, I actually just took a picture real quick of my whiteboard. Oh, it came out crappy, bad lighting. But this is my schedule for the next two weeks or so. Um, I don't, it's really hard to make out, and I apologize for that. But you'll see, uh, this is what we're going to be going through right here. Fraps, uh, movie intro, sound design, color correction, and tones. Uh, some 3D work in Cinema 4D for some of you who want to make some uh, pictures and such. Uh, and simple effects inside of Adobe After Effects. So the next two weeks or so is going to be pretty much tutorials while I figure out um, what's going to go on with my Let's Play since it kind of got demolished. So anyways, let's uh, drag this file in here, and I didn't record this with sound, otherwise you would see uh, sound below this. Um, this is just a video I took of uh, me wandering around in a brand new world on Minecraft. Um, nothing special, just uh, in here to help you guys see what's going on. So first off, let's do with uh, simple fades. So in the beginning of all of my videos, I always fade in the video. Um, let's actually go in here and grab my intro for the thing. So I just click and drag that in. It's of my pre-made intro that I did in After Effects. But um, I always throw it in the in the very beginning. And then if you see on the top left-hand corner of your videos, there's a little um, little blue triangle. And when you hover over it, it'll give you like this little uh, like piece of pie looking thing. If you click and drag that, you'll see something called fade offset. Now a good time for um, for fade-ins that I have noticed is about 0.20 to even a full second in. If you want something really long, then you just go even longer. But uh, I usually keep it around 0 0.23, 0 0.24, somewhere around there. But it gives you that nice, nice little fade-in. And uh, <coughs> when I um, bring in my my clip of this, I need I want to get rid of the uh, the sound file in here, even though there's no sound. So what I do is either go into here, and um, I think it's actually under. Hold on, I, I, I remember I saw the hotkeys, so yeah, that's what it is. It was under group. Uh, remove from, which is U. I use just U, and it separates these two, so I can drag this around and not move that top one, but beforehand, they're, um, they're one. 
see one clip but when you press U it'll separate the two so I can delete the audio and um, I take my other clip and drag it in and force it to crossfade between the two for about a second so you get that nice look right here where one's fading out and the other one's fading in so you have this slow intro kind of shows you what's all about and then it fades into what we're doing and you can get away with doing it in about 20 seconds or 0.2 zero and it's still a really nice crossfade you know nice and slow and it's not too quick if you did it something really small it'll fade in really quick now I don't really like the feel of that so I try to do it a little bit longer so that's how you do that um, other than that there's a uh, simple hotkeys like I have mentioned before you will split audio and video apart uh, if you hit s it'll split the clips so if you wanted to take out a section, you can do that and just hit delete. And then you can just do that. But then it just looks weird. <laughs> so that's how you would do that. So um, I had a notepad somewhere of, of things I wanted to go over with. Okay, I found it. It was right behind me. So fades, fade in, uh, cross fades. Uh, another little thing that I do every now and then is a uh, a picture in picture. So let's um, split this clip in half, and then uh, insert a new video track. And let's put this one right over that one. So the way the camera is going to see this is that whatever's above is always going to cover what's below. So if this this since this video is on top, it inst it instantly covers the whole thing and. Uh, you can't see what's going on down below and uh, same thing goes for if this video clip is below and this one's above you'll see this one but not that one so what we're gonna do here is get a little picture-in-picture -picture action so at the end of your clips you'll see these two little um, these little icons one that looks like a square and the other one looks like I don't I don't even know a robot giving you a hug but if you click the square, uh, also the tooltip will tell you event, pan, and crop. And that's what you want. Um, this is what the camera sees at the moment. Uh, F is for focus, so that's uh, if you want to rotate your, your image, you can do that here, as you can see it rotating over there. Um, and also if you would like to zoom in, you could also do it from here. Now what we're going to do is actually zoom out to make a picture in picture. So we're going to, I'm just uh, using my, my wheel on my mouse here. And we're going to pull that out. And I'm holding shift while I do this so it snaps to these uh, little dots here. So I have a nice, uh, nice clean zoom out. And uh, the aspect ratio will stay the same. So here we go. Put it up there in that corner and then uh, you have yourself a nice little picture in picture and put a little fade in break it in a little bit more and there you go and now you have two videos playing at once and um, real simple uh, I do this for my outro I actually have a preset made for my outro when I click on this this drop down called Minecraft ending and it automatically resizes it and puts it into the center where I like to keep them. And uh, that covers that. <laughs> okay, let's move on to media generators. So media generators are really simple. A lot of the stuff that's inside of Vegas is uh, pre-built and set up for what you would actually use it for. There's only three things that I really actually use in here, and that's credit roll, solid color, and text. Um, Credit roll is obvious. Uh, I've used this in my Hogwarts builds. Um, if you go in right about here, so you can see it up here. Um, this is basically the position of where the text is going to be. Also the width of uh, text that will be shown. So uh, you see these blue borders, this blue square. If you have text that's longer than that, it's not going to fit. So you need to be uh, be aware of that when you're choosing what words you have inside of your 
your uh, credit roll. And uh, the thing I do is go in here and take the background and change the alpha to zero. And then um, I'll change the text to something that's more bearable to um, Helvetica is pretty good. I, I, I use it a lot. And um, <clears throat> over here is the list of the things that it's going to scroll through. Header separates the parts where it'll fade in and out of. Sub item is the item that's underneath the text here. Let me, um, let me move this up so you can see a little bit better. So sub item text right there. And then if you go a little bit further in, you'll see um, right there. Item left and item right. Um, these are, uh, if you want to do some sort of list, you know, like this person was played by, uh, or this character was played by this person, etc., etc. Um, but I don't really use list items at all. I just use the title text and sub item. But I actually don't like this huge space that it leaves between here. So if you click on um, like header, you can easily e even go through here. Um, space below, just take that down and it will bring up the item that's below it. So that'll create a little bit cleaner look. Um, tracking is the space between the letters. As you can see, it's spread out like that. Uh, space above is self-explanatory. Um, you can also change the alignment. So you can have something weird looking like this. And um, you can just change whatever which one you want to header. So if you just wanted to list something like that, then put header to and header, and then when you uh, when you play through this, you'll see it swap out. Then there's header two, and then it fades to header three, and then it fades to nothing, and then nothing again. <laughs> but if you have a lot of things here, like uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to fade through really quick and be a little bit less clean uh, because the length up here by default is 10 seconds. But if you bring that up to 20 seconds and then your clip right here, drag it out until you start seeing that little pie cut in there because that will tell you that your clip is repeating. And now it's at 20 seconds. So now when you play through it, it will uh, it'll take a little bit more time fading in and out of stuff. So that is pretty much the basics of credit roll. Uh, I highly suggest just going in here and, and just messing with things. Uh, you don't even have to use the fade in. You can do uh, enter from left and then slow exit to right um, and stuff like that just to, just to make new effects. Like see there, just zoom in, shoot out to the right. So it's, um, you can do whatever you need. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different uh, uh, options that you can put in every single one of these. You don't have to use the presets. You can find something that suits your needs and, and go from there. So, so that is credit roll. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've gone through credit roll and picture in picture, let's um let's clean up our area here. Uh let's get to work on keyframes. Keyframes inside of Vegas. Now, uh keyframes may sound familiar to those who have worked in uh flash videos and and stuff like that. It's um, very simple, very easy stuff to, uh, to figure out. And your keyframes are going to be found right here on the bottom. Now, as I scrub through this, you'll see that it plays through this little clip. And the end of this clip is the end right here where it stops. And the beginning is obviously the opposite end. So, say I want to go about halfway into this, um, 
I don't know, somewhere around there. I want to zoom in on something. So what I would do is you can either hit the create keyframe down here or you just scrub to the part where you want it and then change it. And you see it automatically creates a keyframe there so you don't have to. And then it'll stay there until, say I wanted to zoom back out at the very end and so it creates another one there. And as I scrub through this you see the focus here is zooming in until that point, the center, and then it starts zooming back out to the next keyframe. Now you can increase or decrease this time by dragging these keyframes around. So say I wanted to zoom out or zoom in really quick right in the beginning but zoom out uh, really slow near the end. I can do it like that and when I play through it'll just zoom in really quick and then fade back out. So if we get out of here you can see what this looks like. Zoom in and back out. You could do this as, with uh, rotations as well. So say we want to throw in um, what's that, a 180 in there and uh, it'll come back out at the end. It's a very nauseating effect but you get how it, uh, how it can work. Now uh, a lot of people are, were asking me how I did the effects with brightening and um, and uh, increasing the gamma with um, Vegas for my nighttime levels and I use Sony levels right here. This bottom thing, um, aside from pan and crop, the bottom is event effects. And uh, when you first start up it'll bring up this thing. And all of these do really cool things. Uh, just go through them and just see which one you know does what and uh, you'll find out sooner or later which ones you're actually going to be using. I use levels and um, I used to use Vegas's color corrector but now I use um, Adobe After Effects since I've learned it now. Uh, color curves is alright as well um, to add a little bit more contrast or, or saturate your picture a bit. Uh, film grain, glow, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different things in here that you can use. And um, as you add them, it'll create this little daisy chain. And this is the order of the effects, uh, of what the effects will do. So if I add in all this stuff, it's going to do levels first, then black and white, broadcast, color corrector, fill in light. So I'm just going to hit cancel because all I want is levels right now. And all I did when working with levels is during dusk and dawn I would change it to brighten as you can see it got really bright because it's daytime and it doesn't need it and if it was just super dark I would do increase gamma and you see it kind of uh, faded out a little bit or saturated but it's actually a lot brighter now as well and um, that's what I did for the nighttime uh, video things and I would use keyframes to kind of slowly soften that back to none. So throughout this clip you'll see it get bright and then it slowly fades back down to normal. So it, it's nice and subtle. So that's a uh, basic effects inside of um, Sony Vegas. Now if we go into this one and do some fun stuff like uh, glow and film effects go over here you'll see uh, glow we can do a white soft glow where it'll take uh, the brighter white things and kind of put this glow on top of them <coughs> and you can change the um, the percent of the glow down here to where well, that kind of looks weird kind of made the sand look like snow uh, intensity you know how bright you would want it and uh, suppression uh, which is pretty much the threshold you know um, white intense glow white highlights red glow blue glow everywhere apparently green highlights on brights and uh, that seems to be the end of the presets but you can choose whatever color you want make it super intense 
and kind of scrub through to try to choose which ones you would want. But, you know, I don't know too many people who use Glow. So film effects. Very old film. Obvious uh, choice for some older style films when you want that weird look, scrubbed look. Where it's all scratchy film and stuff. Um, low quality color cam. This is like VHS days. 1908. It's just terrible looking. <laughs> Yeah, 1980. Hmm. I, w I would assume it would be more contrasty than this for 1980. So what I would do in this situation is bring up color curves and then switch it to uh, increase contrast. <laughs> so I have that little bit more contrast in here. And then uh, actually we can make use of the glow now by doing a, a soft glow bring the intensity way down and uh, suppression as well so just mess with it just a little bit and then um, exit out of that and then we got ourselves a weird looking film <laughs> but um, you can see that there's a lot of things inside of Vegas that you can do that a lot of people aren't aware of because I think Vegas is just being an editing program and you would use After Effects for all of your effects, which is true. I mean, I used Vegas basically just for editing a bare video and cutting out clips to take into After Effects to where I would add a uh, color correction and, and pretty much all the effects I, I do. So that's basically going to cover today. I mean, uh, actually, real quick, let's uh, talk about rendering. So if I wanted to render this, I'd go to render as and I choose where I'd want it. Um, I'll just leave it as, whoop, that went really quick. I'm going to be misclicking. I meant to hit custom. Now, um, I usually render in WMV, and I actually really hate rendering in WMV. But when I upload uh, to YouTube, it'll process the video alongside with uploading it. So after it's done uploading, there's a high chance that it'll already be ready for you guys to watch in 720. Um, I have used to do it in MOV and MP4 because the quality is a little bit better and everything like that. But um, with the limited bitrate that YouTube has, uh, I haven't had any problems with WNV. Um, but for the presets, I use the 720p at 30 frames a second because that's what my my video is at. You can see right here what your project settings are. Mine's 1280 by 720, and it's going at 29.97 uh, frames a second, which is 30 frames a second. But uh, if you wanted to change anything in here, say your 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 video is taking a really long time to render. It's mainly because this preset has a 6 megabit per second uh, bitrate. And uh, that's a pretty high bitrate. Um, but bitrate pretty much delves into uh, how pixelated your videos look from what I've experienced. So uh, you can also go into the video tab here and change it from like 90 to, to 60, you know, or uh, even higher if you want to. Um, the lower it is, the smaller the file will be and um, the, it'll decrease the time it needs to render so you can also do that so that's basically what my render to settings are uh, let's actually that thing was going by pretty quick look at that it's already, already done rendering there it is so um, that's basically it that's not even a megabyte video and um, and that's well look at that oh that's why because it only took that one oh well so that's there you guys go that's a quick tutorial on just how to cut up and put in fades and everything like that I actually need to go get to work on the uh, the other videos because I'm already kind of behind schedule so 
I'll see you guys for the next one. Leave any comments down below of other things that you guys want to know about Vegas or After Effects. Um, if you guys don't leave anything, I'm just going to have to try to think of what you guys want or uh, even get a hold of me on Twitter, you know, of specific things that you want to um, want to get covered. Uh, I will be getting into intros, so don't ask about that. Um, I say just wait for the other tutorials. So, uh... I'll see you guys later, and actually, Wednesday should be the next video, so I'll see you guys Wednesday.